um, kind of a conversation Great. versus me just speeching at you because, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of things I could talk about. Um, but then again, I am the type of person that likes to listen to what people need. That's kind of the whole point of my jewelry, I guess. I think we're good. Um, I usually like to, uh, if you're here, you can put your name and your email, and then I can get to know you maybe a little bit better. You don't have to, but um, yeah, you can put down your name if you don't want to give me your email, but I feel like that is a good way for me to get to know you outside of this. Would you like a formal introduction, or do you just um, want to tell people who you are? I'll talk. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> I this is um this is how I roll. So yeah. If you want to pass it back, we'll just pass it around. <clears throat> Let me think here how I've got this set up. But yeah. Okay. So well hi. Hello. Hi. I'm Courtney. I figured that maybe a good chunk of you would know who I am. So in general, for those of you that don't, I'm Courtney Howard. I am a full-time freelance artist, designer, uh, jewelry designer. Are you okay if I, can we close this? Yes. Maybe? Yes. Okay. Don't let it close all the way because okay. people will think it's locked. Yeah. Um, full-time artist creative person, um, maker, make up, I just make up a lot of the things that um, I choose to do for an income. It's kind of interesting. I'm not sure what kind of word you would use for that. I guess freelance. Um, but my background is I went to EKU uh, for art education and graduated and was really excited to be an art teacher and then thought I was going to slide into a teaching position that was ready to go. I knew all the people I needed to know, did all the things I was supposed to do, but they decided not to have um, an art teacher in that school. And so that was really discouraging right off the bat. I just felt like I just couldn't, sometimes I get one little answer and it can kind of like stop me for a minute and make me think like, do I really want to fight? for this certain thing, if that makes sense. So like, I was thinking when I already had done my student teaching, I just thought, the way that they set up art in schools isn't exactly how I had imagined. It was um, not so much on the creative aspect, but more as, here's what we're gonna make, and I want you all to make that project, versus I'm more on the creative scale, so I just want everyone to kind of come up with their own answers. So that's kind of the key to what's led me to what I do today. Um, so after that discouragement, I my sister came over, I had like a meltdown, which we all have, and she was like, let's go for a hike. And I really had never wandered and hiked. I'd done it with my family, but nothing like, I don't know, I had never really absorbed the idea of hiking or walking, if that makes any sense. Like, I did it as a kid, but I didn't really see all the benefits from being out in nature. So, we kind of went on this little hike that was like this life-changing, transformative hike. We went to Brushy, um, and at the very top, there's all this moss. And I was like, wow, I had, this was like 2011, and I was just so inspired by the moss on the ground because people could step on it. It was like almost winter, so all of it was really green and thriving, and I just thought, I need to collect this. I need this. So I collected some of that moss, and I think that I was kind of drawn to the idea that it was thriving no matter what, which is what I, at the moment, was kind of crushed, feeling like I couldn't thrive because they weren't going to appreciate art and all this other stuff. So that led me to my first little experimentation um, in selling stuff online, which led to me making little terrariums, which I don't do much of today. I do it more as a um, personal thing, I guess. Uh, I do sell a few of them on the internet still, but that was where it all, oh, yeah. I'll start it down here. You guys, you're going to be the leader of the passing of the objects. Um, 
but yeah, that's what started, um, I was shy about that, so I was doing that, like, in my room, like, I didn't know what I was, I, I don't know, I just felt like it wasn't something that people would understand, um, but online to strangers who were interested, they would talk to me, or they would buy from me, and, and then I started meeting this online world where I didn't see people's faces, but they would tell me or they would buy from me, and so then I made that kind of connection with the online world. So in real world, I was kind of shy and not really willing to stand up for things that crossed my mind. I was kind of naive, and um, that's, I guess, when I started feeling more accepted and more accepted of myself because I was succeeding with that which was really strange, but it was like a trend. That's the other thing about what I do is sometimes it evolves around a trend, not on my point, but some of the things that I have to do kind of go along with that, which is kind of a weird side to it. But so anyway, terrariums flew and I was being, I was able to like stay at home, make terrariums and sell them, which was strange. Um, and then I got pregnant. Meanwhile, on the background, on the back burner, I still had to do other things like I would teach after school art programs and stuff. Um, so I would do like the arts council, all that fun stuff, uh, the camp for kids and things like that. And I really enjoyed that because I still loved working with kids. But when I was doing all that, in the back of my mind, I always thought about how I would like to teach adults. So that's another little thing. I was like, I love kids, and I, but I had so much experience doing that. It was just, I just wondered about adults because adults often don't have the opportunity to kind of be childlike. They're always in a structured environment. And so I always wished and thought, wouldn't it be fun to have us all get together and not be in this structured environment, but learn from each other? So then... Um, for several years, I just made jewelry. I did freelance work because I was pregnant. I moved back in with my mom because I was having some other difficulties in my life. So only thing I could do in my room that I lived in was make jewelry. So that's when the jewelry started. And the jewelry was kind of um, birthed from the idea of, at first I didn't want to make jewelry because everyone makes jewelry. That's one of those things. That was a struggle that I was like, I don't, but I want to make jewelry. I feel like I have, you know, this energy I want to put into making jewelry. And um, so for a long time, I questioned whether I was an actual artist or not. There was all these questions, which I feel like what I'm trying to say this to you is just because you probably have a million questions going through your head about what, who am I, what do I like to do? So just the idea that no matter where you go in life, you're always going to have those questions is kind of like what I'm getting at and just just embracing those questions because eventually they lead to this new thing that you had no clue that you were going to do. So then um, I got really into my business, the branding aspect of it. So I did all the graphic design. I wasn't, I didn't take a graphic design class. I just, um, someone gifted me their school subscription to Photoshop. And then I just Googled how to learn all the stuff about Photoshop, which was a little bit of like graphic design. So I learned all that on my own and just put it into my business and kept trying to grow my business. And also it was nice because at that point, another reason I wanted to still do my own business was because I had this little girl to take care of and I wanted to be at home with her. So that pushed me to really get into my business. So that was when I started going to all these festivals to set up a booth and sell my jewelry. And I was interested in all these symbols and these stones. But at the time, I felt like where I was raising a little girl, running my own business, I didn't really have time to sit down and super study about all of these crystals and all the things that I was really into. One of the first thing was like chakras. I, it was intriguing, but I didn't, I didn't properly sit down and start learning about it. Instead, I um, started making a jewelry collection based around it. And through making that jewelry collection, I began studying it, if that makes any sense. So that little symbol is kind of like, whatever you're interested in, start now. Instead of like waiting for you to be so smart or so good or so perfect, this has just chimed through my whole life. So 
Um, I, then I went to these shows, I would lay it out, and people would have questions about, you know, the specific meaning of that chakra or the jewelry. And I had typed out and designed all these cards that had it on the back. That way, if I, in case I forgot, I could read, you know what I mean? So it was research. But at the same time, every time I would set up, it was like me kind of like flashcards practicing. So that happened for several years. Um, then I just kept running into symbols, like a lot of, like the evil eye or the hamster hand. And uh, you see that a lot in jewelry. I was really intrigued by it. But I just started using it, and then I was just learning about it as, as I went, I guess. Because the most knowledgeable practice I've had is setting up at shows and having people ask me questions. Because I, I, I love to talk. I am a slightly introvert, but I am also extroverted, so I like, to, I like for people to teach me too. So it was another experience I got back and forth of that. And I also have this belief now that no matter what, no matter who you're around, it could be a little kid, it could be a 90-year-old person that's halfway, you know, not even here, there's something to learn from each and every person. So I just, I just love it. I love what people think. I, I'm interested in all of that. So anyway, flash forward. Now my little girl goes to school, I have all this wonderful free time. Um, so I have this thing in my head where you can go get a, a, an actual job if you, you know, you have the opportunity now. So it's kind of like this thing that, that is in my mind questioning should I go get a so-called real job. Not saying my job isn't real, but the fact that I've made most of it up <laughs> is kind of crazy. Um, so... Now I just feel like I have that in my head, but I've also been learning about and embracing this law of attraction, which is kind of a trending topic, I've noticed, but for some reason I, I get into these things and it's weird. I think that's why I've had success with my jewelry is because I, I feel like I catch the trend before it starts to happen and then all of a sudden it seems like, I don't know, you might have interest and all of a sudden everyone's doing it. We live on a big planet, so for all we know, we could be having these ideas and everyone else is kind of at the same time. So I think about, um, I've been believing in signs and law of attraction. So no joke, every time a thought slightly comes in my head about, you know, what if there's these other things that could possibly, things like make you more money, allow you to have a paid vacation, allow you to have great health benefits. There's always something that's uh, more, I want to say, spiritual or like just a sign that I just have to be aware of that tells me, no, you're on the right path. So, um, woo-woo, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I really believe in this, and it's crazy because every time I turn around, I'm... I'm I get another sign that is just awesome, and, and I've been super fulfilled lately, so I've been, <laughs> felt super fulfilled, super happy, and I feel like that just comes right back at you, where I struggled for so long, and I struggled about, am I going to make enough money? Uh, one thing about owning your own business is that you just always have that in the back of your head. You always have to play off what you actually make. There's no guaranteed. Um, you can definitely like say you want to make this much, um, but that's kind of something that you can worry about, but what is the sense in worrying about it? Because there's no real control. And if you are obsessed with that thought process, then it's not going to work. So you have to kind of relax a little bit, which got me into meditation, which is super... Um, just life changing for me. So when I do, um, I do workshops now, these made up kind of workshops. I call them art therapy workshops. I'm not an art therapist, but I believe that when you create art, you are coming up with your own answers, you're solving your problems, you're expressing your feelings, and that's what people are not learning through school or through whatever because everything starts with your brain. If your brain is not working right, you could have the best looking body and the best job and the best family. But if your brain isn't working correctly, then, you know, all that doesn't matter. And a lot of people I talk to, it's just like they seem like they have everything. 
and they're stuck on this one thing, even if if that's right there for them. So I don't know if that makes sense, but so I started meditating, and how I got into that was I just signed up for a random thing that popped up on Facebook. It said at the Lexington Zen Center meditation. I didn't really know what it was, but I just felt called and went to it, didn't know anybody, went alone. We sat for 12 hours. Wow. Yeah, meditating. And when I walked in there, nobody was talking. There was like no talking. So I just sat down and I was like, what did I just get myself into? <laughs> like, I'm not, I can't handle this. At that time, I was literally, I felt like my brain was just fried from life and just people and, you know, those types of things. But after I got out of there, I couldn't believe that I did it, number one, and number two was I just felt completely cleansed of all this drama that I kept replaying in my own brain, and these stories that I made up in my own brain, they were just washed away, and the woman that actually did it, she had taken us back at the very end, each person, and was like, um, if you want to say anything, you know, you can share it, or and I just was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this in my real life. I don't know how I'm going to take this to my real life because my real life is a two-year-old. And I live with her 24-7 and I just feel like we just, just like today, you know. She did not want to come. I'm not going to force her to come. Um, but, so, but what she said was, all you have to do is just do it for a minute. Find one minute. Find two minutes, find five minutes. And what I found was all I had to do was go home and say, okay, this is my ten minutes. I'm going to work, wake up ten minutes earlier, and I'm going to sit. Um, and what I started doing was sitting in front of a mirror just because I was not fully confident at that time. So I felt like once I did open my eyes after the meditation, I could look at myself and be like, wow, good job. <laughs> you just did that. So, <clears throat> so many little things to play into that, but... Um, so that led me to my workshop. So I currently have like two workshops that I've been doing. Last year I did my first workshop and it was, um, I had learned a little bit about Zen painting. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool, and I've been reading into Buddhism, if we could go to the top of a mountain, do a meditation like the monks do, you know, get that whole vibe, the outside, everything, get things as good as you can get them because we have all these opportunities where we live. We have a mountain to climb on. And I got some watercolor, big sheets of watercolor paper, and I led people, we did a meditation, and then we led into a Zen painting. That was the first workshop. I didn't get anyone's permission or anything. Um, I just thought, well, you know, we'll just see how this works. Um, and... After I sat up there on that mountain with those, that group of people who a lot of them I didn't know. I mean, I might have known one, I think. But it was just magical. It felt so right. It felt so good. Um, so that was a great experience. And I felt like it was different because we live in this social media world where everyone's... It's cool to have those connections, find those connections, but where do we actually meet up instead of talking online or whatever it is where do we actually how do we be authentic because we can type all we want but everyone knows that when you type a text message it can be read like a million ways when you could just express it with your face or your emotions and I don't know so I had that connection so this year I this has been two years in the making this is my transformation necklace is what I put in the case um, and it's very important because it was just the end all of necklaces I guess and I try, I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to say but it's called the transformation necklace and basically I was going through I just believe everyone's constantly going through a transformation we're all constantly evolving every transformation I've gone through I'm like when is this going to be over? When is this going to happen? Da, 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 da. And then finally I realized it's always going to happen. You're constantly changing. Your body is not the same it was just a minute ago when you stepped in here. Your brain isn't the same. 
everything changes. So that's where this piece of jewelry came together. And I just started making them. Uh, and I was also thinking about all the questions I ever got about jewelry, which is people are allergic. They don't wear it because it doesn't match the neckline. And, um, so I've had like five years of experience of just, it, I really believe like this design has absorbed a good chunk of my life just from these little things. So these are fully adjustable. I'm wearing this one. This one I made at Playthink after I walked across a bed of hot coals, which was an awesome experience um, right here in Berea. That's another thing, keep it local. <laughs> but there's so many little things. But this one, so you can totally adjust it, make it um, any length for any neckline. And then um, you get, one of my art classes in college was, uh, I did some jewelry classes, and she always told me, like, when you make a piece of jewelry, even think about the back of the pendant, that one part that even lays on your chest, like the parts that people can't see, think about fun or unique ways to add to that, so that when someone looks at it, you know, it's really special, it makes, I don't know, it just makes it extra special, it's not like your normal thing that you would buy at the store, so I thought about that, so you get fun decoration in the back, you can even flip it over and do it like a bolo, which is kind of like those western necklaces, but basically it can be worn so many ways. And then each one I would include a quartz crystal, just because what I learned from that was quartz is just essential for cleaning the energy of all your stones, and it amplifies all of your stones' energies and healing properties. Um, then I would also include, because I started learning about essential oils, and um, so this is, I love this one here that you're here because I uh, just randomly run into you and learn more about essential oils, which I love. So I started including a lava bead, which is great because you can um, put some essential oil on it and it'll diffuse throughout the day. I'm going to pass around this lime one. This will, you can just take a whiff of it. It's supposed to be energizing, but that one's my favorite smell right now. Anyway, I don't know. I'd like to add some participation to the group. Maybe I don't know. So... <clears throat> So anyway, with the transformation necklace, it's wax cord, so people who are allergic to certain metals, and I mean, there's so many things. Whatever you project you start, you're going to have a hundred different people telling you a hundred thousand different ways that you need to do that project. <laughs> and absorb it, but at the same time, do your thing, and then one day it might come in handy, like in this case, I guess. So um, basically, when I started selling this, the idea is that when you run your fingers down, I thought about the love beads from the 60s, which are beads just tied in knots on a string and complete, and then that just kind of expressed like love for each other. So there are tied beads in this necklace, which stop your fingers, so you're like, okay. My idea behind this was it symbolized the love that's always present in your life. Because you're going through a constant transformation, two things you need to remember is, number one, there's always love in your life. I don't know how many times I question that myself, like, why am I here? And it's important to remember that whether, even it, it comes down to loving yourself, so there's always going to be love in your life. Um, and then in between those tide beads, there's just these sliding glass seed beads. And those represent um, your affirmations, your mantras, your prayers. Um, thank you. So... Here's something, this was just another thing that I've been practicing. I was thinking about mala beads, which are a strand of beads that they use to count like how many times they say their prayer. Um, so when I thought about the fact that you're changing the position of the bead, the glass seed beads became the idea of you're changing mantras, you're changing prayers. Those things are going to change because they're going to be answered. So don't even worry about it. Practice it, pray for it, but know that those things are going to change, if that makes any sense. So I don't know, I just brought some notes from around my studio, like just to show you how crazy I am. Um, <laughs> but I just randomly, I think this one's like two years old, like I just write affirmations and hang them up everywhere. I have some in the bathroom, this one I had in my um, work room where I work. I'm looking at, what is this? What did I run on the back? 
Um, but this one says, I am limitless, limitless, I am independent, I am strong, I am in control, I am beautiful, I am smart, I am unique, I am worthy, I am ruthless, I am fearless, I am one, I am everything, I am creative, I am flexible, I am relaxed, I am at peace, I am successful, I am loved, I am in a relationship with myself, I am powerful, I am rich. So these are everything that I've questioned, basically, and I just flipped it around and said, that's me. <laughs> and so that kind of goes back to really the beginnings where, you know, you can think, am I good enough to start this? Am I good enough to have a workshop? Do I have the right certifications? Do I have the permission? Um, and for me, it was just like, no, I'm just going to say that, that I do. <laughs> that, that's how that works. As funny and as simple as that seems, and a lot of people look at me and laugh sometimes, I just, it, I really believe it. Um, so... Here's another list that I wrote um, not too long ago of affirmations. And on the top I wrote, let go and flow. And then um, recently, uh, when I got more into these workshops lately, I wrote this randomly. I want to teach people how to love their self and their journey through art making and universal thinking. So I like to write... Um, so if something comes up in my head, something I'm feeling, maybe after meditation or whatever, I'll write it down, and then, you know, if it really speaks to me that I feel like that's something important to me, then I'll tape it up. That's my inspiration, my walls of my workroom. Um, one of the other things, I guess, I don't know how we're doing on time, I'm going to look. So yeah, we're doing good. Um, I've always been obsessed with drawing eyeballs. <laughs> middle school, high school, um, but with the Zen painting, I should have brought one of my Zen paintings, but I recently got one framed, which was actually a gift. Somebody framed it for me, which is another one of those things where you get a sign. They didn't, I didn't ask them to, they just did it for me, and I was just like, that's a sign. Like, that means, you know, that this is where I'm headed. I don't know, but... Um, I pick up things from people. I guess that's another thing I think about as an artist. People say you copy or whatever. But like today I was thinking a lot about how I've been around people and they show me things. And then I take that and influence it back to my life or I try to use it. So the watercolor, this whole watercolor idea came from Rhea Renmillion. You probably have seen all her stuff. She showed me these, this cool watercolor kit. I don't know. I just thought I would mention that. But she also showed me that when she signed her artwork, she did like a symbol. I've never really liked my name because it's so plain Jane. And I want this like cool like name to go with what I feel like I am. I don't know. It's weird. But so instead, I just recently felt like I came up with this symbol to represent me, which has so much into it. But I just, that's where I'm, I feel like it's beneficial to be wherever you're drawn to and whoever it is. Listen to what they have to say. Take the time to ask, why did you draw this in the corner of your artwork? Or why did you use that color? Because artists have so much thought put into every little thing that they do. And for me, I just love that. So that's what I want to carry in, into my work every time I think of how I'm going to progress or evolve. I think about other artists, and I try to put myself around them as much as possible, but we are pretty crazy. So it can be great, but um, we can be introverts. We might not want to share everything. So you get, you, know, you get what you get, I guess, what information, if you inspire them. I don't know. Another thing to think about is where I do all these cool, where I did do all these really cool shows last year. I think I did over 12 shows. And so I got to go to St. Louis, and I went to Asheville, which um, is just fun because when you get a chance to go look around at all these other makers and what they're doing, um, I almost am too shy to talk to them, especially if their booth's full, but I have to get one of their pieces. So I, I, have, I actually have a big collection of handmade stuff, <laughs> things I don't even use. I have this notebook, which was from a girl in St. Louis. And I was inspired because she, she did all the binding. Um, so I was really inspired by the materials. But what I really loved was that she used all this scrap paper. Like, So you're thinking a sketchbook. Well, there's pieces that you can't really use as a sketchbook. And I've yet to 
want to put anything in it because I just love it as is. It's just a unique way of twisting what somebody normally does, what somebody might say like, you need blank pages in your journal. No, you can have scrap papers that she's collected over the years and I was just like, this is mine. <laughs> it doesn't have anything in it yet, but I just, it already, it's almost seems complete, I guess. So I tell my sisters like, whenever I die, <laughs> people, you know, I have my, what is that called? Where they go through your house and they buy the stuff, like people estate are gonna sale. just yeah, I'm gonna have like the biggest, greatest estate sale because all my stuff will be like unique. I don't know <laughs> something I think in my head all the time, but um, crazy little things. Um, I guess what I also want to show you is this is just a little sketch of the transformation necklace that I use at my workshops. Um, just something that kind of adds to that story of it. I also, like recently, I was trying to find books on crystals in the library, and I had found one book, was this, um, and this is really interesting, so it was so interesting that I went and bought it after getting out of the library because I felt like I had to have it, and then when I bought that one, I found this one, which is, seems like the most comprehensive um, book about crystals like it has all the legit crystals because believe it or not there's stones and crystals that are man-made and They're kind of like they're not genuinely from the earth. So This is fun to look at but I had to get that for my um, For to do some more learning on my own because I guess the other thing I want to say is No matter what you do no matter how many degrees you have I feel like you are always gonna be learning like if you stop learning, then you're, you're not at the top of your game. And if you, so they call meditation a practice, and that I just think everything's a practice. Life is a practice. And when you think like that, you're never going to be an expert. Then all that pressure of life kind of rolls off your shoulders, and you're like, I can do anything because there's no, you know, this great crazy thing that I have to finish at. Um, so another thing, I was just laying around today because I did my first half marathon trail, trail half marathon at the Red River Gorge, it was super intense. I felt my legs are feeling pretty crazy right now, but it was so crazy because I did that alone. Um, I don't have any experience, I've never even run a half marathon. <laughs> um, and it was something I just had to mention it just because like, it was just something I didn't know I could do, and then I just did it. Um, I know you all have that in your life. I think it's important to try to remember those things, though, because, you know, as we get older, we forget about things we've overcome, obstacles that we had to go through, and when we get our reward, we're like, what's next? When really we need to just, like, super be in this moment of just, wow, wow. That's what just we feel like, like, wow, this is possible. There was a quote that I ran into on Instagram or something that said, um, if you're not amazed, I think it said, if you're not amazed by the, like this present moment right now, then you're just not living. Like if you are not wow, wowed or amazed, the fact that whatever your situation is, there's always good to pull out of it, then you're not living. So I don't know, that just really rung true to my heart. Like that's what I've been thinking about. So some other things that I brought were some of my more simple jewelry. Uh, these are called spirit necklaces, so I'm all about the story of the jewelry. And this one is one of the more simpler ideas I came up with, but it's the cord is made from recycled saris, like the beautiful outfits they wear in India. And I love that so much because it seemed like it already, like that right there just makes it super special because each cord is completely unique. Um, and then I just added these little charms that have different things, like it says resist, um, and perfectly imperfect, you are my sunshine, all good things are wild and free. But I wanted this to be kind of like a reminder, just a simple reminder, and also just the idea of, of feeling special and unique, and you don't have to be all this, I just feel like there's so much pressure we put on ourselves, life can put on us. I talk so loud too. I want to talk quieter, more peacefully, but um, I don't know. Those are things that I think about when I'm talking. But 
Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I have my, the other little piece that I brought were um, my energy bracelets, which now that I've been learning more about crystals, I'm like obsessed with getting all these stones and having all these different energies around me. So um, this is like lapis lazuli, and I included a quartz on that because um, that helps clean the energy of the stones. There's diffuser beads on that. Um, this is actually like, a, I think it's quartz. It's a certain kind of quartz that's, that's, that, that is that color, but um, yeah, it's just fun. I have agate and tiger's eye and um, rose quartz, amethyst. Amethyst is my go-to stone. Um, I will pass around some of these. You can kind of, I think it's important to touch crystals and feel crystals and rub them between your fingers. So this is labradorite. I never can say that one perfectly right. This is actually fluorite. You can kind of see the purple and the green stripes in it if you hold it up. This is rutilated quartz, which is um, given to me at a festival by random people. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Where do you sell your stuff, Courtney? So I sell it online through Etsy. I currently have a website that is powered by Etsy. So they've made a new option. It's called Pattern. Um, and mm, so you still have your Etsy shop, but then you can add an add-on where they build the website for you. And I thought it was handy because it was a little bit not as expensive and they, they collect all your data and stats and things. Um, but I, what I'm in the process of doing right now is, is working on a website because I want to post my workshops and I want to, you know, I want it to be more cohesive with my, where, where my new direction is, which is hopefully teaching people, which is funny that now I've circled back around to wanting to teach people instead of just make jewelry. Um, this is Spirit Quartz. This one's like one of my most expensive one, so... Careful. No big deal, but that one I love. Um, let's see. What do I want to say to you guys? Kind of start to wrap it up. I guess. Oh, I didn't show you this. So, part of my transformation workshop, necklace workshop. I start, so, I started teaching that necklace, having other people do it because what I, when I made it, I would have people answer questions and say, you know, what struggles are you going through? Uh, I didn't want them to have, like, they could answer whatever they wanted to answer. They didn't have to share too much. But I was shocked because people that ordered it online, it would be a custom listing. And they would literally just go into it like books. So it was like four questions. And I was surprised at what people were saying about just how they felt one way, but they were that way. They weren't this way, but they wanted to be that way. I don't know. It's just crazy. So I would then look up um, more information about, like, for example, their zodiac sign, and it's just random stuff. And then I would listen to what kind of problems they had, and then I would go into finding the stones that help with those problems. Like, um, let me try to think specifically. Um, Amazonite, that's how I started learning about that one. That one, thank you, was, uh, is a stone that helps people who, it goes along with people. This woman was just telling me that she couldn't have kids, wanted to have kids, but then possibly, you know, she could adopt, but she didn't know if that was going to answer the answer for her and all this. So that one kind of went with speaking your truth, but also with um, fertility and things like that. So that was interesting. So then I would just go and make these necklaces based on what stones I felt fit them. So basically, they don't know what they're getting. And then I send the picture when I'm done, and they, they say whether they, not, they like it or not. Nobody has said no. They've all loved it. It's crazy. I feel like because I really like tune into what I'm trying to uh, capture for them. And then I will handwrite a whole thing about why I picked those stones. So it's like a page and a half. So it's really like a, it's a time consuming process for me, uh, but people like it. And then it was interesting to see how that worked out as a, kind of what I wrote in my description was like, it's the communication between who, uh, 
me putting my artwork out and then what that person says, like how that communication goes back and forth, which is, like I said, it can take up a lot of time, but I just felt really fulfilled by that. And I also kind of felt like that has been where I find my artistry, like instead of just producing a product, then this is more impactful. So anyway, I don't know. I have this little tray. This is like the main tray at the workshop. It has all these different stones. It even has some shell, which also has certain symbolism um, and different symbols with charms and things. Um, so it, it's intuitive. Uh, a lot of people, you know, we have these things where we're like, we have these things that in our body is telling us and we don't listen literally all the time. Um, and or, or we'll like kind of hear it and then we'll just look at everybody like, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And so I feel like society struggles with being um, intuitive about what they pick. So I tell people, do not pick what matches your outfit today. Don't just pick what you think looks good together. I say I want you to just pick what you're attracted to, what you're guided to, and that's what they say about crystals. So if a crystal, you're drawn to a specific crystal, it means that you need it in your life. If you lose it, that means you don't no longer need those healing properties of that crystal. I guess another thing that goes with the crystals is uh, people who want to say, I don't believe it, blah, 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 whatever. I don't really fight with those people. I just you believe what you want to believe. Um, but to me, it's just crystals are such a natural, unique formation along with everything in nature. How do we not believe that something like that doesn't have power? You know, when we, we have made these man-made drugs that have power to them, why couldn't something that, like, we are naturally created have power as well? So... Um, and then the other thing I like to tell people if they doubt my crystal theories is that um, if, you know, if you have the option of getting something that doesn't have any side effects versus something that has a million side effects, what do you want to try? <laughs> do you want to try this or do you want to try this list of side effects? Because there is no side effects to this. Um, it's your men mental, you know, and, and I guess one last thing I want to say, which I always think about, is crystals are a practice in what you believe about yourself. So it'll help, it kind of is like, okay, let's say this is, is helps you dream bigger or manifest your goals. Um, so you're going to start believing that. Because if you really believe that that's what's happening, then it's easier for you to believe in yourself and when you believe in yourself versus the law of attraction and all these other um, things that are interesting, you can do anything, you know? Like, I ran a half marathon. I just don't understand how I did that. It is incredible. And I had everyone pass me, and every time somebody would pass me, I'd be like, man, this is getting harder now. Like, it feels harder <laughs> because these people are passing me. But I finished, and it was incredible. Um, so now I'm going to open it up to questions. And I hope that was interesting for you guys. Um, if you are like interested in more stuff, you can definitely reach out to me. I answer messages on Instagram and Facebook and email and my shop thing. And so I have a lot of messages and I, I make sure that I answer them. Uh, but yeah, and you can always like talk to me if you see me out. I'm usually at the library. That's why I'm so happy to be at the library because <clears throat> the library is such a great place allows you to kind of come in here and when you're in an inspiring space like the library where everyone's kind of just being attracted to what they're pulled to there's no question of whether uh what you're reading is like what you should be reading or whatever it is everyone goes to their own section and then everyone just meets there no one ever questions anything it's quiet so the library is like the best place um and it feels really special to be in there and thank you so much for including me and I just feel like all this is little signs. When I take my little girl in the library all the time, it's nice to come in here. And that's how I met you. When I just set up my stuff, it was all of a sudden somebody, uh, information about oils came to me. And so I guess that's another thing is just finding those little answers and, and paying attention to them. Because, like, I don't know about you guys, but you could go through and you could have, like, five people tell you a great compliment. And if you're stuck on this 
whatever somebody made you mad yesterday or you didn't get the dishes done before you went to work, whatever it is that you're holding on to your head, you're not paying, then you just get redirected and you, you don't care about what those people said. It's kind of sad. So I feel like, um, you know, try to pay attention to the, the good things in your life. Try to see where your life is going good because what other options do we have? Unless we put, you know, all that other stuff's just putting strain on our brain. Any questions? Ask me anything. I don't care. Anything. Okay. Anything. Uh, I might not answer. I don't know. Oh, or I'll just come up with a woo-woo answer for you. <laughs> but, um, and, and it's so funny because other people that I've talked to about stuff, they're like, woo-woo, and I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Like, that's another way I learned. Like, I guess that's referred to as woo-woo is just people who are into all this and then other people are like, oh, you're just so happy all the time, and you're, um, they'll, they'll just pinhole you into a box. And I feel like, no, that's not, that's not completely who I am. You just never know somebody either, you know? So it's just not, I don't know. I like, for example, I've been coloring my hair this solid color, and... It's a kind of purple and pink. Yeah, I've had people come up to me and just kind of start a conversation or something that... I feel like pinholes the idea of who I am because of my hair color. <laughs> it's so, but it puts you in perspective of how people go about the world, how they look at other people. They're looking at the outside appearance. So I just want to keep my hair this funky color because I'm ready for these people who want to tell me something and then I'll just be like, no, that's not who I am. Like now maybe you've learned a little bit about, you know, not judging somebody about how they look. And I'm not rude about it. I'm just saying it's nice to kind of wake people up that, you can wear or look however you want, and it shouldn't affect who you are as a person. It shouldn't be judged. So, yeah, I'm going to let you guys have a question because I'm going to keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Two years ago, I ran a cost-to-benefit analysis on Etsy shops and found that the average person makes about $3.50 an hour on Etsy. Have, wow. you, have you found that to be true for yourself? Um, Wow. She hasn't wanted to, like, think about things. Right. Like that. <laughs> so, yeah, here's the, um, I guess a couple of points to that is, number one, no, because um, I made a living. At, it, it, I know, I, I know, that is an interesting question. Um, yeah, I don't think you've broken it down, like, hour. Yeah. Like hour. That's actually a good thought. But, I guess the way you saying that is just makes me think, like, when you do something you love, you're not worried about what you're getting paid for. At the same time, you have to balance the idea of, are you tired? Are you spending time doing other things? Don't go that far. But what I think with the $3 thing is people are saying, well, I work all the time. Because I could tell you that too. I probably could tell you that a year ago. Now I can't stand to hear somebody say, well, you're so busy. It's like, no, I don't want to be so busy. I want to have conversations. I want to hang out with people. Maybe I can't do it right this minute, but you know what I mean? So I think that plays into how people look at their job. Do you see a lot of competition with the kind of merchandise that you have? Uh, that was the one factor that I had like battled with in my head before I actually did it. And then I had no choice. It was the only option I felt like I had. Um, and then I realized there is no competition because um, everyone, this is another thing. I'm so interested in life coaches and people who are, are selling these, like, you know, digital prod products and they're making money. And, but there's a million of them. There's millions of them. Um, and I've seen it several times where they say, everyone has their, and I, and I believe it, everyone has their own way of saying something. So, there could be Tony Robbins up here, but there could, you know, if you just filled it with a room and you didn't tell them Tony Robbins, Robbins, whatever it was, is speaking, there would be a group of people who couldn't click with it. Do you know what I'm saying? So, everyone um, has their own way of, of telling their story. They have their, everyone's totally unique. You just, um, whether you believe in yourself or not is really what it comes down to. If you want to just say you can't believe in yourself, you're going to go work at McDonald's and you're going to make more money, then um, where is the value coming from? Is it money driven only by money? That's where you want to live. You want to live in a life where you're driven only by money or do you want to live in a life where you fill it with purpose 
and having just the more that I'm grateful, have this gratitude, the more I, I'm accepting of what I am, I feel like I could die tomorrow and be happy. Does that sound crazy? Because I have, I talked to my grandma and she was diagnosed with cancer and she's scared to death. She's absolutely scared to death. I could totally understand that. I'm not saying that if I was diagnosed with cancer I wouldn't be scared like that, but it brought a moment into my mind of she's lived a good life. Like she's had all of this stuff, so why why would she be so scared where I just feel like I could die tomorrow because I've experienced just being happy. I mean, it's a lot of people, a lot of things people take for granted. Money just rules the world. That's why the library probably is where it is because people don't go in here and necessarily pay for books. They're all <coughs> relying on each other. But that's a good question. Might think of the good, the greatest answer when I get home, but then it'll just implant more of, of how I think about life. You know what I mean? Yeah, very much. Listen to everyone. Well, answer it on Instagram, and I'll see you there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess that's another good thing. Is like um, I've always been on to the free marketing, which is Facebook, it, or it was um, before they did all this other stuff. But I, it's funny that you say that because I post a lot on Instagram, and lately I post a lot in my stories, and I post. Um, People, I've had a lot of people be like, you're addicted to your phone, and da da da, and I, and I do say, yeah, maybe I am in some cases, but my answer for the social media craziness is that you're always going to be addicted to something, um, <laughs> and the best thing that you can do is just be aware of your addictions. Don't try to battle them so hard that you're destroying yourself, or you're picking up another habit just to quit this one. You just kind of have to say, okay, I'm going to step back, I'm going to turn off my phone today, or I'm going to go do something. Um, and then, you know, some people are like, well, you don't have to post everything. But for me, I've always kept a journal ever since I was a little girl. I've always had scrapbooks. That's just how I like to record and share. And, and there's so many people that say, they'll come up to me, I don't even know them, and they're like, oh, man, I just loved what you shared the other day. And I'm like, I literally just you know, posted what I was feeling. Um, and I guess the other side of it is just you have so much noise, just like news channels, TV. You have to deal with all the noise as well where you're randomly going to find someone that's this perfect shape, that's doing all these squats, that's doing whatever. And that's just a practice in you looking at other people, accepting them for what they want to do that makes them happy. Even if they're not happy, you don't know, you don't know their story. And, and then you just, you just cheer on other people. If they are doing something that's not hurting other people, then we should be supporting each other. If it's hitting a like button, I know that sounds crazy, but um, that's where I've tried to, I guess that's how I've grown my social media. It's not huge. Uh, it's not huge compared to the people, when I, people I started following because it can be so fake. People can buy followers. People can buy likes. But, um, I don't know, I, that's just a big topic I could talk about, but I just feel like being authentic, we got to stop going back into these corners of judging people and just getting farther into this dark corner of just worrying about these people that don't impact our lives, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Could go in more. Uh, okay, I don't know what time we're at. Uh, two minutes. Let's do one more question. Yes. Um, how do you make a amethyst like the one right here into an amethyst that looks like that? So these, for example, that one just kind of got chipped, but um, I buy all of, I don't shape these stones, um, but I super admire people like Jared Cox, Fishing Creek Jewelry. He shapes, he gets the raw stones, shapes them, makes them into jewelry. Um, so these I buy, but I always make sure, like one thing that's really important to me is finding the stone that's real, because you can go to the store and you can find stuff that looks like this, but it could be glass. But yeah, this is just a, this is shaped into that, it's cool that you noticed that, this is just shaped to look like a crystal and polished, mm -hmm. versus this is natural. Natural crystal form. Yes. 
And then this one, it kind of looks like, you know, somebody could have cut it like that, but it's natural form. It's fun to look at crystals, too, and kind of help them, you know, kind of help escape from the real world, like meditation does, I feel like. Anything can be a meditation, but yeah. Yes, does that help you? Yeah. These are more raw, so those aren't polished or anything. You want to invite people this to just come natural. down and look? Yeah, go ahead. And thank Mom. you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you guys. This is coral. Coral. Yeah, and I have some of my uh, actual, these are my older business cards. I try to keep them to see the progress, but these are my newer ones. You're more than welcome to take this purpley one.